viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Afghanistan likely to relapse into hotbed of terrorism. Park back terrorists targeting minority Hindus, non locals in Kashmir. And Islamabad's role in Mumbai terror attack exposed. As the Taliban reclaim the water in Afghanistan, security experts around the world want that the country could again become a hotbed of terrorist training and indoctrination. The Taliban has promised that it will never allow its territory to be used by foreign terror organizations as it had for Al-Qaeda ahead of the 9-11 attacks. But many in Afghanistan and West have reacted with skepticism. They are warning that the Taliban rule in Afghanistan is radically reshaping terrorist groups in South Asia and around the world. A report. The Taliban hoisted a giant flag of their movement near the Afghan capital around eight months after their return to power. Several hundred Taliban, many armed, attended the ceremony presided over by Deputy Prime Minister Abdul Salam Hanafi near the mostly deserted diplomatic enclave in Kabul. Some of those in attendance showed their joy by touching or grabbing the flag before it was raised. It is all happening at a time when the international community is concerned over the threat of terrorism that has emerged in the country since the takeover. Intelligence agencies worldwide are warning that Taliban rule in Afghanistan is radically reshaping terrorist and militant groups in South Asia and around the world. Despite Taliban promises to sever ties with Al-Qaeda and oppose terror groups such as the Islamic State's Afghan affiliate as codified in the 2020 Doha Agreement with the United States, there has been scant evidence of progress. There is a possibility, and we've seen signs of that according to this uh, media report, that they're recruiting the orphans of the security forces of Afghanistan who fought against them and who lost their lives. Now they've left orphans behind. So they're recruiting them, trying to turn them into suiciders. Now, given all of this, I can see that within the next few years, Afghanistan will turn into a breeding ground of terror. Recently, a UNSC report revealed that Al-Qaeda retains a presence in Afghanistan in the provinces of Ghazni, Helmand, Kandhar, Nimruz, Paktika and Zabur, where the group fought alongside the Taliban against the ousted government. The report also claimed that slain Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden's son visited Afghanistan last year. It further revealed that Amin Muhammadul Haq Sam Khan who coordinated security for bin Laden, returned to his home in Afghanistan in late August last year. The Taliban government rejected the report, but it is very difficult for Taliban rulers to deny another claim of UN report that Islamic State Khorasan is taking advantage of the turmoil in the country. According to the report, Islamic State Khorasan, or ISISK, is recruiting fighters from the Eastern Turkestan Islamic movement and the Turkestan Islamic Party, among other foreign terrorist groups. It aims to position itself as the chief rejectionist force in Afghanistan and to expand into neighboring Central and South Asian countries. Terrorism now is posing a serious threat to Afghanistan. Therefore, many world leaders and security experts believe that the forces which help Taliban in regaining power should be held accountable. Pakistan is now in the hot seat for providing a haven for terrorists and many Afghans have been demanding action against Islamabad since the day Taliban took over Kabul. Pakistan should be sanctioned. I have been vocal about that, but unfortunately, I do not see that happening. Uh, I mean, uh, President Biden has mentioned on several occasions that Pakistan is much more important to the U.S. than Afghanistan ever would be. Pakistan is, of course, always touting its status as a nuclear power. It has the sixth largest army in the world. It's a country of over 200 million people. So, um, 
even, you know, even if it's not sanctioned, it has to be held accountable. I mean, over the past two decades, you know, there was a, bi a Congress um, commission, a bipartisan Afghanistan group uh, that, you know, all these recommendations uh, to the U.S. Congress and to, uh, um, you know, um, the U.S. government. And throughout all those reports, they, they, they you know, they, they made the recommendation that you have to address the Pakistan problem. The UN member states are concerned that if Afghanistan descends into further chaos, some Afghan and foreign violent extremists may shift allegiances to Islamic State. The conflict landscape of Afghanistan is diverse and multifaceted, characterized by rivalries between jihadist groups and competition for recruits. The impacts go beyond the borders of Afghanistan. The events in Afghanistan, therefore, continue to demand great attention. Let's now move to India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the situation is tense as terrorists continue to target civilians in brutal attacks. With the number of victims being minorities or non-locals, the attacks have sparked fear among civilians. Terrorists have targeted and killed 11 civilians in Kashmir Valley over the past two weeks. On April 4th, there was a spate of terrorist attacks in the valley in which a Kashmiri Pandit, one CRPF personnel were killed and two migrant workers were injured. We have a report. The year 1990 saw a vicious hate campaign against the Kashmiri Hindus in Kashmir Valley. A culture of impunity created over the years, backed by religious fantasism, led to their genocide. And the story did not end there. The brutal target of the native inhabitants still continues today. This time the victim is Balakrishnan, an innocent Kashmiri Pandit shopkeeper in Shopian district. Terrorists opened fire on him and injured his hand and leg. He was immediately rushed to an army hospital. After the recent incident, Kashmiri pundits took out a rally to protest against the selective attacks on the Hindus by terrorists in the valley. Kashmiri Hindus raised anti-Pakistan and anti-terrorist slogans and demanded justice for their community member. यहाँ पे आज जो ये दरिंदों ने एक गिरोनी गिरोनी जो ये हरकत की है एक आम इंसान पे गोलियाँ चलाई है सीआरपी वालों पे गोलियाँ चलाई है उसमें एक जवान शहीद हो गया मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है ये कौन सा जहाज है कैसा जहाज है इस महीने में तो शैतान भी बंद रहता है लेकिन इन दरिंदों ने इस 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 माही मुबारक के मौक एक एक आम इंसान को जो अपने फैमिली के लिए जहाद कर रहा था जो बाहर से आया था अपने फैमिली के लिए जो असल में जहाद कर रहा था उस पे गोलियां चलाई ये उस लिए हमारे और साउथ कश्मीर में भी कल से कुछ इनोसेंट लोगों पे गोलियां चलाए एक दो वहां पे भी कल शहीद हो गए उस लिए हमारे The recent attack on Balakrishnan is just another addition to the list of continuous attacks on Kashmiri pundits Last year in October Pakistan sponsored terrorists shot dead a prominent businessman ML Bintru in Srinagar. In fact, in the same month a government school teacher was also killed by terrorists after he urged his students to stand in attention during the national anthem. Not only did Balakrishnan become the victim of the recent terrorist attack, in two other incidents on April 4th, terrorists targeted two non-local laborers in Pulwama and opened fire on a CRPF personnel in Srinagar. Attacks on civilians in the Kashmir Valley have witnessed a spike in the last few months. In 2020, as many as 33 civilians and 56 security personnel lost their lives in terror-related incidents. While in 2021, the number of civilians killed stood at 40 and that of security personnel stood at 20. Of late, terrorist handlers sitting in Pakistan have changed their strategy as far as attacks and targeted killings are concerned. They are now concentrating mainly on soft targets. Ever since the talk of return of Kashmiri Pandits was going on and the parliament, Indian parliament has also discussed this, Pakistan to send out a clear message to these Kashmiri Pandits that they are not welcome into the valley has targeted killings of Kashmiri Pandits. 
this again has raised a little bit of fear amongst them all this is being done so that the kashmir valley seems to be unsettled the people over there do not get into the complimentary of having peace tourists don't come there the business establishments don't function and there is a sense of uncertainty that is there so that pakistan can use its propaganda that it has been using all these years to try to wean away the public of kashmir though there has been a spike in pakistan back terror attacks in the valley the indian security forces have always managed to foil all the devious agendas of islamabad according to recent data produced by the ministry of home affairs a declining trend in terrorist incidents has been seen in jammu and kashmir with a figure showing a downfall of almost 50% in the cases from 417 in 2018 to 229 in 2021 this is the reason behind the disappointment of the pakistani establishment and pak sponsored terrorists in the valley the brutal killings of innocent civilians and security personnel in kashmir reflect the frustration among the terrorists and their mentors across the border However, such barbaric terror attacks will not succeed in undermining Jammu and Kashmir development journey as people in Kashmir will not let this conspiracy succeed. Pakistan has an established history of harboring, aiding and actively supporting terrorists. There exists a well-established nexus between Pakistan's civil and government military inter-services intelligence and the numerous terrorist groups trained and armed in the country recently pakistan's interior minister exposed his country and confessed terrorist ajwal kasab's pakistan's connection a report on november 26 2008 the terrorist organization lashkar e taiba attacked the financial capital of india mumbai crowded places and sensitive locations including hotel taj the obroy chhatrapati shivaji terminus nariman house and others were targeted during the attack the attack claimed more than 170 lives and left 300 injured ajmal kasab who was the sole surviving attacker captured by the security forces later confirmed the assault was planned coordinated and conducted by the lat and other pakistan based terror modules in testimonies acquired by the intelligence agencies in the country kasab was quoted as saying all the attackers came from pakistan and their controllers too were all operating from that country kasab was hanged to death on november 21 2012 pakistan has often denied its role in the attack and its ties with kasab But now the Pakistani Home Minister Sheikh Rashid himself is confessing Ajmal Kasab's Pakistan connection. Recently while speaking at an event where Imran Khan, Prime Minister of Pakistan, was also among the attendees, Pakistan's minister claimed that former Prime Minister of Pakistan Nawaz Sharif had provided detailed information of Pakistani terrorist Ajmal Kasab to India. Ajmal Kasab ka pata India ko inhone diya. इन्होंने इंडिया को पता बताया कि अजमल कसाब जो है उन्होंने जो फरीदकोट का एड्रेस है वो नवाज शरीफ ने दिया अगर ये बात गलत साबित हो तो जो चोर की सजा वो मेरी सजा है द मुंबई अटैक रिमेन्स एन ओपन केस विद पाकिस्तानी स्टेट कंप्लिसिटी स्टिल डिबेटेड बट द रोल ऑफ एल एंड इंडिविजुअल ऑफिसर्स विद इन दई एस आई इज नाउ परसिव इन मोस्ट क्वार्टर्स एज बियॉन्ड सीरियस डिस्प्यूट Pakistan has yet to take action on the multiple dossiers shared by India. None of the prime accused in the case have been prosecuted so far. Islamabad has been doing a U-turn on its promises, claiming a lack of evidence, a claim which has only exposed its ill intentions as well as its poor track record in countering terror. देखिए भारत ने पूरी तरह से जितने भी डोसियस थे वो सब पाकिस्तान को अजमल कसाब के बारे में सब दे दिया है लेकिन वहाँ की सरकार जो है वहाँ के कोर्ट्स जो हैं अगर उसका संज्ञान नहीं लेंगे उसको पूरी तरह से नहीं करेंगे क्योंकि कैंगर कोर्ट है वहाँ पे और उसी तरह की वहाँ की सरकार है जो मिली हुई है पूरी तरह से टेररिस्ट के साथ में 
तो जब उनका पूरा सिस्टम ही वो उस तरह से काम करता है तो कोई कुछ भी बोल दे उससे क्या फ़र्क पड़ने वाला है अब कल परसों इमरान खान कुछ दिन पहले मोदी जी की फॉरेन पॉलिसी की बहुत तारीफ करने लगे अपने आप को जस्टिफाई करने के लिए तो ये बड़े अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक सिस्टम है वहाँ पर इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी का अपना मुझे नहीं लगता है कोई कुछ कर पाएगी या कोई कुछ करेगी लेकिन पाकिस्तान को ये दुनिया जानती है कि ये टेरर स्पॉन्सर कंट्री है उनकी एक फॉरेन पॉलिसी है जो भारत के खिलाफ है और उस पॉलिसी में जो काउंट क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म है उसका बहुत बड़ा रोल है और अजमल कसाब उसी का एक हिस्सा था पाकिस्तान based on its territory the international community should now designate pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism pakistan supports terrorism and itself faces its consequences but now the situation is getting worse the ongoing political crisis in pakistan has come as an opportunity for terror outfits to increase both their influence and strength to discuss on the issue we have with us geopolitical expert kamar aga as you know pakistan has a long history of political instability and once again the present imran khan led government is in crisis do you think that terror groups in pakistan can take the leverage of the ongoing political crisis in the country in a situation like this where the political parties are actually you know uh, marginalized or weakened and in and country has no uh, neither the spiritual leader nor any charismatic political leader in the country so the major gainer would be extremist islamic organizations and uh, militant groups in pakistan and i think uh, uh, pakistan army you know have been supporting these groups for a very long time except one that is tehreek e taliban pakistan Uh, that is uh, opposed to pakistan military establishment but others are pro pakistan in case military dictatorship returns in pakistan do you think it could control domestic terrorism in the country or will we see a new era of mulla military nexus you know there are all it's uh, you cannot control all the militant groups it is true that it, they were created or with the help of army army was behind it and they have built uh, developed so many uh, militant groups who were funded by them and uh, trained by them but some of them you know uh, have turned against the army and have joined the ttp and that is a major problem you know, because they have their own vested interests considering all the recent developments is it right to say that our neighboring country is moving slowly towards complete chaos and anarchy pakistani is you know state is uh, is collapsing is is a failed state serious economic crisis and political instability uh, shows that it is moving towards chaos and anarchy if it is not checked immediately and there are no Uh, the problem is you know the military establishment doesn't allow democracy to thrive doesn't give uh, other uh, states uh, uh, the powers which they wanted they have been desired or developed those states you know those uh, provinces so that is a problem so in if uh, the army continues to uh, uh, continues to uh, play a greater role in political affairs of pakistan in that case you know Uh, there is a strong possibility that the, the chaos and anarchy would spread throughout the country thank you mr aga for giving us your valuable time and with that we come to the end of this edition of news week south asia we will be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@ani.com this is shivangi mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of news week south asia Goodbye and take care.